are the parts for the bottom. This is the parts for the lid. This is the parts for the top rail. And this is for the corners. Uh, now I have to cut the plywood. <coughs> so I've got the toy box glued up. And uh, it just kind of roughed out. I need to sand it and finish it. But now I'm going to make the carvings for it. So uh, this is for Winnie, a dog, a little puppy. She likes puppies, she likes shoes. So I'm taking this picture here and uh, for the body and for the face I'm going to use this. So I'm going to turn that head back this way. So that's what I'm going to draw out on here and then I will just attach it. Got the dog drawn and cut out. I've saved the pieces that I cut off. That makes it a little easier to clamp. The type of wood is basswood. Carves very nice. So I'm just going to begin by doing the stop cut. And I look at the dog face. That chin and the nose is sticking out the furthest with the ears and that going back. So. I will work from the back towards the front, but I will do that by starting to do the stop cuts. So I'm going to go down to the deepest area, uh, but I need to save the tall areas. The deepest areas is going to be down in here under the chin of the dog. And so I'm taking this body and I'm turning the head and putting that face on the dog. I'm making my stop cuts with a, vein, a veiner tool that has a radius for a much softer look. If I used a V-tool, it would create a harsh look that I would have to soften. I'm putting on the texturing for the hair. And it's a little puppy, so I'm trying to make the texturing very soft. So what I'm doing is just taking a gouge and making uh, tool marks, lines with the gouge, just in the direction of the, the way the hair would go. So I need to follow some up the back. But I can have some smooth areas too. That will add to the softness. But right now I'm just going to make it a little bit more coming up the back. And then it should be done rubbing against it with uh, clothes as you're getting toys out so I want the whole thing to feel real smooth and not get caught up on the clothes. So that's why I have just a very slight texture, very smooth. I'm making a book. This is the outline of the book that's down uh, away from the top surface. So on the top surface I'm doing a Dr. Seuss theme. So this is the cat in the hat and this is the fox in socks. So I've kind of put them together and the fox in socks is holding the tail of the cat in the hat. So that's going to be raised above the book. So I'm doing the stop cuts and then I'm going to cut down uh, the background so it conforms to the pages of the book. Then I will outline the uh, and carve the characters. In roughing out the background, it is uh, critical that you make these lines, you follow your lines vertical down. If you undercut or fan it out, 
then uh, it's going to change the drawing so the size of the drawing will change so when I'm uh, right now what I'm doing is I am straightening up the lines making sure everything is perpendicular so when I start cutting the image down then it doesn't change size So this is the fox and the sox tail that I'm doing and he's holding the hat and the cat's tail but the tail will be down deeper it'll be almost down to the because uh, it's in the back of the fox it'll be almost down to the background. Making the background into the shape of an open book adds a little extra interest uh, to the carving but it also adds a little bit more difficulty. I've glued up some Aspen boards. I've uh, bought the boards from Menards. They're three quarter inch thick. So I glued them together to make it inch and a half thick and then I made it one foot by 14 inches. This is going to be a book for the top. Uh, I'm using Aspen because Aspen is a little lighter and I'm trying to keep the uh, lid of the box as light as I can. Yet I'm trying to get enough surface area so when they, if they were to stand on top of the box, because uh, this is for kids, they might do that, that they won't go through the box. It spreads out their weight to support it because it's only going to be sitting on that uh, one quarter inch plywood. Well, the cat in the hat and the fox in socks is roughed out, so now I'm going to rough out the book. There's a book that's going to go on the top. And uh, so, what I'm doing first is just going to scrape off my glue. And I just made a putty knife into a scraper and I have a nice heavy burr on the one side and that's what I'm coming down that glue joint. Now this wood here I'm using is Aspen. It's the one I glued together to get the thickness for the book. I'm using it because it's lighter and that's what I'm going to use on the lid. Initially I was going to use that uh, Dr. Seuss one uh, that I just roughed out, but that's a little bit too heavy for the lid. This is a little thinner and I can write stuff in the book. What I'm trying to do is I have some guidelines. This is not going to stay flat, but I'm bringing up a angle here that's a little concave then a point of inflection maybe about here and then a convex and I don't want this to be flat so I'm taking it at a fairly abrupt ending here trying to keep my lines and then after I'm satisfied with both sides then I will do the rounding in between. Uh, then we'll be dressing up the sides of the uh, as the pages are kind of stepped out. So I'm first coming up to the two lines getting a nice curve coming up here and then uh, I will blend those two lines in. That will almost be flat but not quite. feel a lot with my hands to make sure that it is nice smooth curve. Your hands can feel more than your eyes can see. Cutting the hidden grain is the hardest part of uh, carving when it's all in grain like this and this aspen is cutting very well so what I'm doing is I'm making the cover of the book stick out a little bit more than the pages and I'm beginning by making a stop cut going all along here 
I'm just making the V tool cut or the stop cut a little bit deeper. Then I take the number three, a wide chisel, and I take a mallet and I have a mark down here that I'm uh, working towards. The chisel must be very sharp or it'll mush over the end grain. And aspen is a good wood. It isn't too soft. The softer the wood, the harder it is to cut the end grain. Putting a shallow relief carving in the book. So this is the picture, little girl uh, saying her prayers at night, and uh, uh, Jesus is standing there blessing her. Carving uh, another puppy for the side of the uh, toy box, and uh, this one puppy is going to be chewing on a boot. So. Uh, uh, to help hold it here on my bench, I saved the pieces that I bandsawed off the block, and that gives me some straight sides that I can, that'll hold in the bench dogs. And then uh, this tail is uh, uh, fairly delicate, so I'm going to uh, uh, keep it fairly close to the uh, mounting surface, uh, not have it stick out too far and uh, the grain is going this way so it is quite fragile so when I'm carving it I'm going to carve up into the tail to where it's the strength if I carve away or push down or push up it's going to break so I need to keep pushing in this direction And I work from the back here, away from the mounting area, uh, even though I'm going a little bit against the grain, but it, uh, I, if I would take this down, that would make it weaker. So first I'm going to take the heavy stock off here, and then I'll work up against this. Then I can do my rounding. Here's another delicate spot where the grain is short and I have to push into the strength of the wood. If I was to come out, I would break that off. Moving it down so it doesn't get uh, hit by a lot of things. Moving it down closer to the background so there's not so much sticking out. So I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup. I wanted to show you this pegboard for holding. There is just uh, three wooden pegs here that hold this in place. So with random drilling and wood dulls, you can find about any position that will hold a, a irregular shaped object. So I'm going to go back and work on this dog now that is uh, chewing on the boot. And um, this pegboard I wanted to show you. I have two pegs in here right now that will kind of hold it up around the shoulders and I'm going to put in another third one in here. Sometimes you need more than three but uh, many times just three is all you need. Now that's good enough. That'll hold it. There's got to be a reason why a dog's nose is shaped like this, why his nostrils are kind of curled around, recessing his eyeball back in so he's not quite so buggy-eyed, make his eyes look a little softer. The age-old question of whether to sand or not to sand. Well, sanding is really faster when you're trying to get rid of all your uh, little imperfections. Uh, but uh, normally I don't like to sand and uh, this little frog 
is going to be heavily pigmented so I'm going to varnish it but I'm going to be mixing a lot of green paint and some red in there and uh, so it really doesn't make any difference how I smooth the surface off. I uh, have this dog that is not going to be uh, very heavily pigmented. There's still going to be browns and that in there, but it's going to be almost transparent. So this one I am going to do uh, no sanding on because I like the finish better when you put a clear varnish on if the finish is not sanded. Just refining another carving that's going on to the toy box. This is uh, the carrots for the rabbit. This rabbit is kind of hoarding carrots. I have the lid on. I have a piano hinge. I have reinforced where the bracket is for that friction mount so the lid can be brought down. It won't slam the baby's hand. Carvings that will go on here. So those friction brackets, I can adjust it for the extra weight of the carving. And this is the size of her hand uh, that it is now. So I'm going to put that down on the, And then there's a total of 11 carvings that are going to go around the box. The technique I'm using is I put a clear coat of varnish on and when the varnish is wet then I add the artist oils. The varnish allows the paint to dry quickly so the oil paints normally take uh, uh, almost a week to dry but with the artist or uh, with the varnish it will dry in almost overnight. Carvings are done and now I just need to mount where the carvings go on the box. So I'm just marking the holes where I'm going to be drilling for the screws from the back and then I'm going to be epoxying the carvings on. Well the carvings are attached and I have the first coat of varnish on and uh, now I'm sanding down the uh, roughness that it raised the grain uh, with a 220 grit sandpaper and the varnish that I'm using is a Minwax. It's the Helmsman. It's a spar varnish, indoor outdoor varnish. Well, I'm putting on the last coat of varnish. I'm using a brush. I normally brush all my finishes on use a good uh, bristle brush when you're varnishing because the bristles have enough surface tension to break up the bubbles. A nylon brush will not do that. 